Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. It's obviously true that some people did purchase XRP, at least in part, because of Ripple's efforts. I think that's obviously true. In fact, um, I'm acknowledging that one of the reasons, I, I was talking about this just a few days ago, one of the reasons that I purchased XRP uh, was because of Ripple, because it had to do with the, uh, the ecosystem itself. It's the thing about this. If there were no developers building on top of the XRP ledger, would that make it reasonable to then want to purchase XRP necessarily? Or would it be better if there are multiple developers building on top of a blockchain? And, and furthermore, and the, you go, well, isn't this just making the SEC's case? Well, if you want to say in part it is, go for it. But uh, how about this? I didn't purchase my XRP from Ripple. And secondary market transactions uh, you know, are not part of some sort of scheme with Ripple. So I'd still reject that flatly. But, you know, the idea that we can't look at a, an ecosystem and see that there are developers and then, uh, you know, have that, is it some sort of original thing? Like, the fact that there are developers building on top of a blockchain, that should not be a reason that I want to purchase? What? <laughs> what kind of upside-down world is that? Uh, and so I, I, I kind of shared some of my thoughts on this a few days ago, but there's been more discussion since then, and I want to share some stuff from attorney John Deaton here, uh, kind of fleshing out the concepts. But I just, I don't think that it's a bad thing. Now, you can argue whether or not it's it's going to, you know, the degree to which it's damaging to Ripple's legal case, fine. But it still isn't the case that I'm in some sort of common enterprise with Ripple. Hell no, I'm not. <laughs> Better believe that. Uh, but before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so here's a headline from the Crypto Basic from yesterday. Deaton says Ripple selling XRP as investment contract doesn't make XRP itself a security. And uh, part of what they're covering ultimately is uh, it, it comes from right here. So there's somebody who goes by the name on Twitter, Caesar Corvinus, 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 yeah, whatever. And uh, he said the following. So what about the ones like myself that invested in XRP, also known as Ripples, the ones in it long enough, know what I mean, that absolutely knew about Ripple. One of the main reasons I invested back in 2016 is because of who sat on the board of directors and uh, and David Schwartz working for the NSA. And perfectly fine. And by the way, what he's talking about is when XRP was created, yes, XRP was known as Ripples. And funny enough, Ripple, the company, was not known as Ripple. They were known as uh, NewCoin and OpenCoin, and then ultimately renamed to Ripple, which is unfortunate because it just adds confusion. <laughs> but it's just kind of funny, like... Uh, the company uh, became known as Ripple, and then the coin, which was originally known as Ripple, just goes by XRP now, and that's that's fine. It helps eliminate confusion to keep pushing and spreading that message, which is true and is factual. Uh, so what he's referencing there is that back in the day when he jumped in, it was more commonly, uh, at least sometimes, called just, just Ripple coins. And that is true. Um, now, John Deaton retweeted that, and he said, Yes, I said there are people like you out there as well. And if Ripple had direct contact with you and sold you XRP, there is a valid, valid argument that the Howey test was met because in that scenario, number one, you gave money to Ripple for XRP. Two, you entered into a common enterprise with Ripple uh, through vertical commonality. And three, you were sitting back expecting profits on your XRP derived by the talents and efforts of its uh, CTO, David Schwartz, management team, board of directors, and Ripple, the company. Now, if you didn't buy directly from Ripple and had no contract with Ripple acquiring XRP in the secondary market, it's a different situation. And as Paul's note, that's the case for me. So the fact that I saw that Ripple was part of a vibrant ecosystem, the XRP ecosystem, the fact that I recognize that as true doesn't mean that I entered into a common enterprise with Ripple. It doesn't mean that that somehow makes XRP a security or that something illegal was done there. Obviously not. And, and John Deaton is very saliently making this point here. And he says, um, if you acquired XRP for non-investment purposes, like transferring money on the ledger or utilizing the decentralized exchange, etc., it's a different scenario. But even if Ripple sold you an investment contract utilizing XRP as the underlying asset, it doesn't make XRP itself a security, and it certainly doesn't turn my XRP or my daughter's XRP into a security. Spot on. And so, and if, and if it did, though, if, if those things, even purchasing XRP on secondary markets, if that turned it into a security, then I'm, I'm just going to say, how the hell are we supposed to invest in anything in crypto in the United States? Anything? 
So the only thing that you could then invest in is a coin for which there is no uh, there, there is no community, there, there is no developer activity on it. There's not a single developer building on top of, of a particular block. That's the one you buy. Because that's the alternative here. How stupid is that? <laughs> like, like we're supposed to be shamed because we purchased because, you know, there are factors of a vibrant XRP ecosystem and those uh, compelled us to buy perhaps. And, and, and we're supposed to feel shame or like that's supposed to be some sort of illegal occurrence. It's just silly nonsense. Um... And then there was also this headline from you today. Ripple SEC lawsuit attracted millions of users to XRP. Crypto law founder. And not so fast. It's actually not what... Uh, they're talking about John Deaton, of course. That's not quite what he said. And so I want to kind of set the record straight on that a little bit. He's not saying that there are millions of new people in XRP purely because of the lawsuit. He was making a different point, which is on the topic that I'm, I'm discussing here. And so there's somebody that tweeted out in part, Ironically, I first heard about Ripple due to the lawsuit. Somebody named League of Ledgers. Now, attorney Deaton retweeted that, and he wrote the following. I have zero doubt that many more XRP holders first became aware and learned about Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse because of the SEC and the lawsuit than any before. There are more than 4 million XRP addresses. There are people in this world who own XRP today and still don't know about Ripple. Uh, let's pause the note here. So... That's true. There are more people aware of Ripple today. I do agree with that. But the headline that you today had was wrong. That's what I have qualms with. It's not that millions of people are now aware because of this. Uh, but, but, so what Attorney Deaton says is correct. And so uh, Attorney Deaton then says, I was talking to a lawyer who said, but John, some of these affidavits are from people who bought XRP in January or February of 2021 after the lawsuit. Do you really think this is believable? And so he's saying there are people that signed affidavits saying that they didn't know about Ripple. But this happened after the lawsuit. They don't know about Ripple. How is that possible? And so John says, my response was, look at the addresses. Japan, Mexico, Netherlands, Australia. Not everyone gives a S word or even pays attention to what is going on with the SEC in the United States, end quote. All right. So if you're in one of those foreign countries, uh, foreign to me anyway, uh, is, it that, is, it, is it particularly surprising? that people would be less likely to be aware of Ripple, the company? Because I'm, I'm telling you, a lot, a lot of people, they are just looking at what are the largest coins out there. Hey, maybe I'll just get myself a little portfolio going on here, a little bit of diversity in there. Maybe buy the top 10 cryptos by market cap, not even sufficiently researching them. <laughs> people do that, though, okay? And if you do just want broad exposure, it's not like the wackest idea if you're just getting your, you know, dipping your feet in the water, getting used to stuff while you're researching. It's not like the craziest idea out there. I mean... I did that in late 2017. I first bought crypto knowing almost nothing about them, but I wanted the experience of what it was like to purchase crypto on exchange. So for me, that was part of the research, and I put a minimal amount of money in. And, and people do this stuff, though. It's it's not that way. It's not like I was putting the entirety of my net worth into this thing that I had to research. That that certainly was not the case here. But, but yeah, the idea that uh, just because I knew about Ripple from the very beginning in 2017, that doesn't mean that everybody else did. In fact, John Deaton has, has evidence that it's actually the opposite. Most people did not uh, have, uh, you know, any sort of knowledge that Ripple, the company, exists. Or if they had heard of it, they didn't know what Ripple was. He has, he has actual proof of that, as I've cited before. So, is what it is. I just wanted to make a quick video just to add on a little bit on that and share John Deaton's additional uh, comments. Because when I, uh, a few days ago, when I uh, published that video on this topic, uh, I didn't have this stuff from Attorney John Deaton. So, I, kind of, I wanted to kind of flesh it out a little bit further. But, again... The idea, like we shouldn't be afraid to admit if, if Ripple was a part of you factoring in to purchase XRP, so what? That's not some sort of bad thing. It's just an acknowledgement that, hey, we got a thriving uh, XRP ecosystem here and Ripple's part of it. You know, I mean, as, as long as you're not purchasing directly from Ripple, like Attorney Deaton said here, who gives a damn? <laughs> so that's my unprofessional opinion because I don't pretend to have some sort of a legal background. I sure as hell don't. But it just makes common sense, right? I sure as hell think so. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.